Hey internet, Eric here. <laughs> okay, I'm making this video only per request of quite a few people. Um, a few weeks ago, um, I made a video about Corey Feldman. And if you want to know what that video is about in the long form, please go check it out. Um, here's the Cliff Notes version. Um, a few weeks ago, I made a video about Corey. Corey had gone on Dr. Oz, and he released the names of a couple people that he says were some of his sexual abusers when he was younger. And, you know, that that's good for him. And I have no problem with that. I never did. But he then decides to, he, he has this Indiegogo campaign because he wants to raise $10 million to get a theatrical movie made about his life. And he also says he needs it for... Uh, security for his family during pre-production while he's writing the script and blah 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 and the rest of the video like I said I go into detail is about how I asked Corey a question and he responded and then I had to deal with some of his little followers all right now since that video came out first off it's actually I'm surprised how popular it is because with my channel I think I'm at like 195, 196 subscribers. I don't get that many views. I really don't. I don't get that much interaction. I'm just some schlub in his basement making videos, okay? I'm no one important. Um, my average views are between maybe 25 to 50. Well, this, in my opinion, this video I'm talking about has exploded. You know, it's now at like 265 views. And I shared it on Twitter. And... It just it caught on. A lot of people retweeted it. And I've met some people since then who agreed with what I said in that video. And basically, since then, these people have contacted me with their opinions, which th with, with things that they have found out. Now again, I've never met these people. I'm taking what they say at face value. Um, it's the internet, who knows, right? You know, I could be lying off my ass, they could be lying off their ass. You gotta take what people say at face value. Just like what Corey's saying at face value. But, since then, they've shared some stuff with me, and I've had many conversations with these people, um, many conversations with Corey supporters as well, and these people that agreed with my video since then have said, Eric, why don't you make another video and this is going to be my second and final video about Corey Feldman you know not counting movie reviews like if I review the Lost Boys or I review because I've already done Goonies and Gremlins but if I review fuck what else was it? Stand By Me or something like that in it you know I'm not gonna not talk about Corey there but this is like on a personal level so all right Previous video ends, and since then, I have been blocked by Corey Feldman on Twitter, and that's a funny story. I've mentioned a lot of some of this stuff in like my live feeds, but my live feeds are between 90 minutes and two and a half hours long, so I'm not going to make you guys go back to those live feeds and sit and try to scope through where I talked about Corey, but I mentioned this. I mentioned we're at Pizza Hut because we're getting dinner. And I'm checking the Twitter feed ever since, you know, Corey tweeted me. You know, he retweeted me. Like I said, go check out the previous video. And I found out that he blocked me. Which, oh no, fuck my life. I've been blocked by a goonie of all people. On Twitter. Who cares? But, since then, I've had his Twitter followers still try to contact me. Um, say things to me, direct message me, and what have you, and I'll get into that. But, things have gotten really interesting since then. Since Corey blocked me, he has released a few videos, and, well, first, he's released a, he released a video saying how the Indiegogo campaign wasn't taken off as, as much as he had hoped. And he started tweeting celebrities, and this was before, you know, before he blocked me. I found out something, he's tweeting celebrities, and 
Well, he's not that. He's not tweeting celebrities. He's doing these random tweets saying that you know, why doesn't these celebrities you know donate to this cause? You know, and I'm paraphrasing. My phone's upstairs charging. I'm not gonna go upstairs and and, and get it for, you know for Corey Feldman's sake. But what it was is he's telling his followers to to, to, to tweet these celebrities. You know, um, you know, ask them for money and. <laughs> He, you know, of all things, you know, people tweeted fucking Willie Nelson, of all people. Old-ass Willie Nelson, who probably doesn't know what Twitter is. He's got his own Twitter feed. I'm sure it's done by his manager or whatever. And I've seen people randomly tweet Willie Nelson saying, why don't you donate to Corey? And this and that. And I'm just like, wow, isn't that really harassment? Could that be considered harassment? You know, you telling your followers to tweet random celebrities, you know, and asking them, telling them that they should donate. Um, and I, this is all just coming off the top of my head because, like I said, my phone is upstairs, and I'm just going to be, you know, saying what I can remember. And since then, Corey released, what did he say? He released a long, drawn-out letter online, which I'm sure he obviously didn't write, because if you read Corey Feldman's tweets, everything's in capital letters, first of all, like he's fucking yelling at you, and then second of all, He abbreviates everything, like have is H A V instead of writing out the word two, he does the letter the number two. Um Corey, they've you know, they've Twitter has made it so you can type in a lot more than you know, characters than you were allowed before. So you don't have to, you know, do that anymore. But this long, long letter was typed out. And it was professionally written and it written and it made sense, so I'm sure it wasn't written by Corey. But in the end, basically he was explaining that he doesn't need ten million dollars just for the movie. He needs it also for legal fees because he says he's going to name more names. Okay. That's fine, you know, understandable because you know if you make a movie and you're going to name out a big celebrity or someone who a big name in the um, uh, entertainment industry that is still working, like Corey says, and he said this person was part of the pedophile ring or whatever, I'm sure he's going to get sued and he needs legal fees. And then he's also saying that he needs armed security 24-7 because of the danger his family is being put into um, because of this. Okay, there are some crazies out there. I understand that. Um, now, here's the thing, Corey. This is where I really... The shit hit the fan with me. I'm like, wow. No one's listening to him now. The begging didn't work, so he's going to do the guilt trips. In that long-ass letter, he said, if you don't want to pay, and I'm all paraphrasing, if you don't want to pay for security for me, that's understandable. That's fine. But pay for the security for my wife and child. Then he goes on to say, if you don't want to help pay for a child's protection that is on you. So he goes, he's trying to guilt trip people in saying, you know what, if something happens to my wife and child because you didn't donate, that's on you. It's not on me for naming these names, which is great if these people really did do something to him. You know, they need to burn in hell because, you know, pedophilia is one of the worst things in the world. But again, Corey, you're going about this wrong. You're begging for donations. And then you're guilt tripping people. One of the worst things to do to a person when you want them to help is to guilt trip someone. And then, you, then you're going to use a child, your own child, to guilt trip them into donating. Wrong. Then there were some problems with Indiegogo. Supposedly some people were donating and the donations weren't working. Okay. I've never donated to Indiegogo. I've never done any of that stuff. I don't have the money. I'm like, we'll get into it, but like what his wife said in one of her videos, I'm a regular person or a normal person. I don't know what she really said, but I'm a regular person. I don't have money to donate for something like this. 
okay? So, where was I going? Guilt trips, okay. So then, Corey releases another, releases a video trying to explain a little bit of what's going on. He explains how the Indiegogo, you know, donations aren't working. You know, a lot of people are saying they're donating, but their funds aren't working. But then Corey has contacted Indiegogo, and for some reason, Indiegogo is telling Corey that there's no problems. Whatever. Interesting. All right. Then what happens? Corey now starts a GoFundMe. And he starts this GoFundMe account. First off, it's, it's hilarious. Um, if you see some of the stuff that he promises to give these people after they donate, like, can't quote me on the prices, but let's just say you donate 100 bucks, you get a signed Angelic to the Core CD, which, if, you're, if you like Corey's music and you like Corey Feldman and you want some autograph merchandise, go for it. No pun intended with his song. Go right ahead. But then if you donate like a thousand dollars, he sends you a personal email thanking you. Now first off, how do we know that email is not going to get sent to your spam folder where it probably belongs? And then how do we also know that Corey was the one that's typing this? How do we know it's not you know an assistant or his wife or even his son? Anyone that's typing this, sending it to him. But if you want to spend a thousand dollars for, you know, a spam email saying thank you, all in capital letters probably, for donating, have at it. Oh man. But then I was, then what was I saying? He started a GoFundMe. Okay? Corey starts a GoFundMe account and he says how now he has access to these funds right away. With Indiegogo, he probably wasn't going to be able to get the funds till January or maybe February. Not sure. So he starts this GoFundMe account. Oh, what I was saying about, you know, the prizes or whatever you get. It's funny how since, you know, with Indiegogo, it's funny how the stuff that he says he sent out, everything's been slashed to 50% off and, you know, downsized, you know, just to, again, trying to get people to donate. Cause it's not working. Back to GoFundMe. He was he did this video where he was saying how he has access to these funds right away. Fishy, and the reason why I say it's fishy is because I've had a lot of these people contact me saying how Corey's broke. Um, he you know he, this mansion he lives in is really a townhouse, and he he can't afford to pay bills and this and that. Again, I don't know if this is true. Never met Corey Feldman, but it's just, you know, it's, you know, the puzzles are starting to fit. You know, the puzzle pieces are starting to fit here. Okay, now he has access to these GoFundMe accounts, or these GoFundMe, you know, funds. And it's funny how <laughs> he posts this on Twitter, because he may have blocked me, but I can still find a way to find out what he posts. Um, he posts about how he thanks everybody for donating to the GoFundMe account. And then he's going to go off on a wonderful vacation for his anniversary with his wife. Coincidence? Possibly. I don't know. I just find it funny how he was saying how it's hard, you know, how no one's donating and he doesn't have access to the funds. But then once he has access to these funds on GoFundMe, he's able to take his wife out on a vacation or an anniversary getaway. Okay, what else? Wow. <laughs> now he has, he's, Corey's realized that he's not going to get $10 million. He knows that. So he made a second video. A second video where he says, oh wait, nope, let me stop that. He was, he said he was going to, he said he made a second video. And he wasn't going to upload it because of, out of respect to, I don't know his first name, so I'm not going to say it, Ron Howard's father. Ron Howard's father had recently passed away. 
and he worked, Corey worked with Ron Howard's father in a movie. He did, he said that. He, <laughs> Rance, I believe his name is. I could be wrong. Corey tweeted, and he said, you know, R.I.P. Rance Howard. It's nice that Corey did that. But then he proceeded to say, you know, how he worked with Corey in, worked with Corey in a movie that Corey directed. And I, I had to do some searching. It was called Busted. I believe it was, came out in 95, 96, 97. It was one of the, the Corey movies, with Corey Haim as well. And Corey proceeded to say that Mr. Howard, I, like, I don't know if his name is Rance or Vance, I'm sorry, but I'll just say Mr. Howard told Corey about how his directing skills were as good as his son Ron's. Now, I found this video, or this movie, on YouTube. You're no Ron Howard, Corey. I think Mr. Howard was just saying that because he's probably, if you've ever seen Ron Howard in uh, any type of interviews, he's like the nicest freaking guy in the world. Maybe he got that from his dad, and his dad was just trying to be a nice guy to you. Because what I've seen of this film... It's no Ron Howard movie. Now, and another thing about this busted, this movie called Busted, it was a Corey film. Corey Feldman, Corey Haim. And I found out that uh, Corey had to, this is just another thing I just thought of, Corey had to, Feldman, had to fire Corey Haim from this video, from this movie. Because, you know, I believe Corey Haim was, you know, was through his, Corey's drug use phase, and Haim was not showing up on set a lot, and Feldman said that, you know, it was one of the hardest things he had to do, and fire is, you know, his best friend. Now, I found it funny when I was doing some searches on, on this movie Busted, Haim was fired because he wasn't showing up on set, and, you know, his drug use had gotten out of control, supposedly. But who else was hired and acted in this film? Dominic Brasia. If you don't know who Dominic Brasia is, horror fans will know him as Joey from uh, Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. He's the, the, the overweight, kind of retarded guy with the, the chocolate bar who gets hacked up with the axe by Vic. Now... A few weeks before I did my video, Dominic came out and said that the person that molested Corey Haim was Charlie Sheen. Okay. And Corey Haim's mother said it was false. Charlie Sheen, of course, said it was false. What was funny about this is Dominic himself, just years prior to this, was accused of being the one that molested Haim. Never proven. We don't know. It's all hearsay. Well, Dominic was in a movie. If let's just say let's just say Dominic did molest Corey Haim. Put yourself in Corey Haim's shoes. Okay, if you were molested by a man or a woman, whatever. If you're molested by a man, and then your best friend hired you to be in a movie that he's directing. And then you find out that he also hired one of his other friends, Dominic Brasia, to be in the movie. So you now got to work in a film with the man that supposedly molested you? No fucking wonder why you're not on set all the time. And I remember the two Corys, you know, the, the A&E uh, reality show. And... Haim exploded on Feldman in a scene where they're in a diner or something together. And Haim said that Feldman knew what was going on. And I believe it's, I don't know if it was in the show, but I believe it was said that uh, Feldman introduced uh, Haim to his molester and this and that. And he knew what, what happened, whatever. So maybe that explains why Haim wasn't on set, because Brassi is there. Hearsay, we don't know. But, um, 
yeah, he said he didn't want to post this long video because of how, uh, Mr. Howard's death. Okay. I personally didn't think he made a second video. I was wrong. I'm mad enough to admit when I'm wrong. He did make a second video. And I watched it. And this video was all about, was supposed to be about him explaining everything that's going on. Why he needs this money. Um, and he said, and basically he said, you know, I need armed guards 24-7 to watch me and my family when we go through pre-production and I write the script and blah, blah, blah. And armed guards aren't cheap. Okay. Right. But the thing is, there's more to this freaking video. First off, he starts about, he starts it out talking all about him. Like he always does. He talks about, and you know, it's sad with what Corey went through. He talks about how he, you know, he became a millionaire by, I don't know if he was a millionaire by Goonies. I don't know. And then his parents took all of his money. And then he became a millionaire again after he emancipated, you know, himself from the parents. And then he made bad decisions. And his, he became broke again. And you know what? I don't judge anybody who has made bad decisions. You know... We've all done them. I cannot judge anybody who's done something like that. And like I said, I know the last hit film Corey had in theaters was, I think, Ninja Turtles. And that was in 1990, and he only did the voice of Donatello. Um, but he then goes on to say how, it's how he's been blacklisted and, and this and that, and how he can only do reality shows where he's playing the parody of himself or he's doing... You know, other movies where he's a parody of himself. I'm sure he was talking about Dickie Roberts. Um, but you know what? If you're an actor, you should be thankful for any movie you got. You know what, Corey? A lot of fans hated Lost Boys the Tribe. I enjoyed it for what it was. You know, you took, you know, it was a, it was, the, the original was a cult, you know, classic. People loved it. They were excited to see the second one. It was what it was. I thought it was decent. I'm not going to trash it. Um, and then they made a third one, which I think was better than the second. Corey, if you're watching this, I doubt you are. You were fun in Lost Boys The Thirst. I had a blast with that movie. It was a lot of fun. Your performance, your deadpan was great. Your comedic timing with the other characters was great. So you can still act. But then, you, but when you say how you're blacklisted and you can only do straight to video stuff, it shouldn't matter, man. Work is work. You do fine when you're straight to video. You should keep going. But you made this this all about yourself and how it was bad. And then you brought up. Oh my gosh, you're talking about how you want to help. You know, child actors. And because of pedophilia and this and that and blah blah blah, you, and you bring up Shirley Temple. You brought out how Shirley Temple was possibly molested when she was young, and how people forgot about her, and how she got out of the business. You made it seem like she got out of the business for a negative reason. I don't know. I never watched a Shirley Temple film in my life. Maybe she got out of the business because she got older and she wanted to start a family. We don't know. He brought up. Soleil Moon Fry. Soleil Moon Fry, popular because of Punky Brewster. And then she disappeared for a while. Well, I have been talking to, you know, uh, Scott Schwartz, who has known Corey for over 30 years. You know, I've seen some posts on Scott's Facebook page. And he said, you know, she got out of the business because she got married. And she had children. There's nothing negative there. Why can't someone leave the business to start a family? Corey Feldman brought up Ricky Schroeder. Ricky Schroeder made money, I'm I'm assuming, on Silver Spoons and The Champ. You know, that movie with John Voight. Left the business. Came back. Had a successful uh, comeback. I believe it was NYPD Blue. He did that Dolly Parton uh 
autobiography TV movie. You know, he's still somewhat getting work. He's got money. Why would he, you know, doesn't seem anything negative. He brings up Jonathan Brandis. Jonathan Brandis is a tragic, is a tragic, tragic story. Brandis was, you know, he got started in, like, you know, It, the, in the, the It TV miniseries and Never Ending Story 2. Ladybugs. You know, sidekicks. He was he was in a Chuck Norris film, and he was on Sequest, which was a popular, popular TV show in the '90s with Roy Scheider. And then, like a lot of child actors, he just stopped getting work, and s tragically, you know, he ended his life. Um, but Corey makes it seem like these actors got out of the business because of you know the evil molestation that's going on. We don't know that that's what caused Jonathan Brandis to end his life. It might have just been because the man could not get work because he grew up. Like a lot of child actors. And it's just horrible how... Corey, you're supposed to be talking about why you're doing this fundraising. And you bring up all this negative stuff. And it's, it's, it's really bad. Um, and since then, he's also had his wife make her own video, and she was talked. She talked about how now there's assassination attempts. Pop. I didn't watch the fucking video. I couldn't. I could after watching Corey's. I can't watch his wife's. I watched like maybe thirty seconds, and I turned it off because she didn't. She looked like she didn't want to be there. She looked like she was being fed lines or reading cue cards. I don't know, but. From what people have told me, she makes it seem like, you know, there's assassination attempts out on Corey because supposedly the day after he went on Dr. Oz to, and I think Corey said monster trucks, tried to run him down and I don't know. So that's why they also need, you know, the 24-7 security. It's just, it's just gotten so batshit crazy lately. And the thing is, also with Corey on Twitter... He's even said this because of the screenshots I've been sent. <sighs> Some people have questioned about donating. And Corey has said if you don't donate, you support the dark side. You're supporting pedophilia. You really think saying something like that is going to get people to donate? And you know, dude, this is 2017. Everybody screenshots everything. You got to know what the fuck you're saying on social media. What I say in me, in, on this channel, between my drunken rants and videos like this, you social media is not for the weak, dude. You got to know that people are watching you got to watch what you say because it's going to come back to haunt you. So, Corey has just gone basically all crazy. He's placing the blame on everybody but himself. And here's the thing. Corey, you don't have to stay in the acting business. There have been plenty of actors. You know, because you, you mentioned Soleil Moon Fry, You mentioned Ricky Schroeder. You sadly mentioned Jonathan Brandis. Here's the thing, Corey. There have been actors who have left the business and have had successful lives. Peter Ostrom, Charlie, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. He did one movie. He's got a great life. He's a successful veterinarian. He's a normal person, like your wife said. Um... Living a great life. Mara Wilson, Mrs. Doubtfire, Matilda, the re one of the remakes of Miracle on 34th Street. Living a great life, being you know an online blogger. Scott Schwartz. You know, he was a child actor from Christmas Story and The Toy. You know, among other things. And he's now living a civilian life. Um, you know, paying his bills, working in radio, doing great. You don't have to stay in the business that you claim is evil. 
So that's all I got to say about Corey. But let's talk about his followers. And it has been interesting dealing with those people. Now, I, I one of my uh, one of my people, one of the people that I know that I've met through after making this video has made her own stuff, and she's been trolled lately. And Corey likes to send these people out. You can tell because they're you know they post her videos. And then they, they hashtag the I stand with Corey and this and that. They talk about how whole, how much of a horrible person she is. Okay. Well, Corey, you always use how you, you always say how you're going by God's will. God chose you to do this. God chose you to personally end your tour to do this. Even though it's, it's kind of common knowledge that your tour ended because of either lack of interest or your band quit because they weren't getting paid. But if this is God's mission, and you're using that as an example, don't you think this harassment would look bad to God? Okay, but again, like I said, it's social media, that's the chance you take. There are trolls everywhere. Now, speaking of, man, when it comes to your followers, and this is me personally, this is talking about the interaction I personally <laughs> with them. Oh, they got to get new material, dude. They've got to get new material. So first off, you know, they make fun of my friend for her looks. Okay? Because if you're going to troll somebody, know what you're doing. I'm not a troller. I don't like to troll. But I, I like to respond in like a sarcastic, you know attitude type of thing, you know, so they don't realize that I'm talking down to them because they're too fucking stupid. But here's the thing. They're attacking her looks, and this one person is attacking my, you know, you know, I, I'm not going to call her my friend because I just met the chick. I've only had a few conversations, but they're attacking her looks. But then when I, I do my research, I can, I, I'm good at doing this, you know, internet research. I'm finding out, you know, people's YouTube accounts and Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts and... I guess if you have an Instagram, I can find you there. You're making fun of this person's looks when you yourself are one of the are like a 30 year old goth chick. And I'm not one to judge a person's looks. Look at me here, but shouldn't be casting that first stone, honey. And then I got them coming after me. Oh no, the Goonies have been, you know, unleashed on me. And this is what I mean by if you're going to troll, put some freaking effort into it. The worst I've gotten, dust, the worst I've gotten is I've been called an unemployed loser vlogger. Oh no. Well, for, uh, you, got, you got two out of three, right? I've had a job for the last 13 years. But still, so you attack, you know, call me a loser. Oh, no! I know. Some people have seen me, uh, and they've messaged me because they've seen me talk to Scott Swartz. Because Scott has made some public posts about Corey. And they say, I'm only being nice to Scott because he might be able to get me in the business. Now, I don't know Scott well at all. I've had maybe two or three personal conversations with them, if that. I don't know if the man still acts. I know he's in radio, but I don't know if the man still acts. How am I gonna, how is Scott gonna put a good word in for me or anything like that? Okay. <laughs> I've also had people direct message me and PM me on Facebook saying because Scott and I have a mutual friend, and I'm only saying Scott's name because he um, made some public posts. I won't say this person's name because they have it, and I don't need the little Feld fam going after them. Well, Scott used to have a career in the adult film industry. He only did one movie where he performed, but he also like did bit parts, you know, like he, you know, a background character here, or, or an extra here, 
Well, he know you know he's got you know he knows people in the business, and there was this one person who actually direct messaged me and said that I'm only being nice to Scott because he works with this former starlet, and I'm being nice to Scott and being nice to her because we talk on Twitter a lot, on Facebook a lot, so Scott can put a good word in for me so I can maybe get with her. This is what I'm dealing with. And it's not, you know, I'm just, I just don't get it. You're really going to go that route. Okay. I live in the Midwest. This person lives in California. I don't leave my house. When the hell would I ever go to California to try to hook up with this person that I've Talk to maybe within the last year of being on Twitter every now and then and possibly try to hook up with her because little Scotty Schwartz said and put in a good word for me. This is what I'm dealing with, people. These are the type of trolls that Corey sends after them or after anyone that disagrees with Feldman. I've had, what was it? I had one chick. Direct me and the thing is, they're, they're they're cowards too. You know, they either go after your looks. Oh, go ahead, make fun of me with the way I look. You know, I haven't shaved and trimmed my beard in a fucking month and a half. I'm not scared about you know I'm fat. You know, I got no hair. I'm not scared about what you could say. So they go after your looks. They you know. They go after you know saying you know I'm trying to get hooked up with you know a former porn star or trying to get in a business. Or. They send you a message and they block you right away. Like, I had this one chick send me a direct message on Twitter. It's a statue of Perseus trying to kill Medusa. And before I could respond and even ask her, you know, at first I thought it was a spam, you know, a spam message, like a bot. I got the message from Persephone something, official Persephone. This is the goth chick I was talking about. She sent me a, a, a picture of the statue of Perseus killing Medusa. And then I wanted to respond saying, you know, because I like to fuck with bots too. They're fun. And I couldn't respond. So I go to this person's page and I'm already blocked. Why does this person send me this and then I'm, and I'm blocked? But then, haha, I look at their, their, their background picture and it's the fucking Lost Boys. So somehow... My video got around to them, and she sent me this without explaining what it was, and then she runs away and blocks me. So I posted on Twitter, because I don't give a fuck on Twitter, and one of my Twitter followers told me what it was, and he went and scoped her out, and he's like, dude, she just basically put some voodoo on you because she's just a goth chick. I'm like, whoop de doo You know, you're not the first person to, to, to supposedly put a curse on me because we don't get along on the internet. But seriously, man, this is what, this is the Feld fam here, okay? These are the ones who, even if you're not trying to be a troll, if you're not trying to be a dick, if you're trying to seriously say, just watch his videos, look at his posts, look at his wife's posts, read between the lines, see how shady it seems, they're like, oh, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. No, they attack you. Even if you're being, how would I say it? Even if you're having a civil conversation with them, and I understand, you know, if you you like a, if you like someone, you want to defend them. But this is where like fanatic, you know, fan is short for fanatic, and this is the proof right here. And holy shit, does it come out? So, and the thing is, you know, I just remember. Corey wants to get this movie made about himself, but there supposedly is a Lifetime movie coming out just next year about the two Corys. You know, it's on IMDb and everything. Now, granted, Corey is probably saying, well, you know, I want my, uh, you know, my movie to be theatrical and blah, blah, blah. But I've heard Corey is actually a, an executive producer on this, um, 
Lifetime movie. So he might be, you know, trying to twist words around. And, oh, shit. Corey also said that he's going to be donating some of the funds he gets, you know, from his GoFundMe account in Indiegogo to... Don't quote me on this. You're going to have to go watch his shitty video. To a rape foundation. You know, it's great that these, you know, foundations have have, have causes. You could send money to, to victims and this and that. He never said how much he's going to donate. It's out on the internet. So you can just search it if you want to. Apparently, this foundation has been contacted... They say the best way to donate to them is through their website. Okay. Naturally. They know nothing about Corey's claims. Interesting. Anyways. Alright. If I've missed something to the people that I've talked to in over the past couple weeks, I'm sorry. But I'm going to say this. I've talked for 41 minutes. That's 39 minutes too long. Okay. Um, I'm done talking about Corey Feldman on YouTube. Um, I'm still going to talk shit about him if I have to on Twitter. Um, I don't give a fuck on Twitter. If you're watching this, you can go ahead and try to troll me at movies underscore beer 247 I don't care um, but I'm done talking on YouTube about Corey can't do it anymore I've wasted enough time I wasted enough iPad battery power I wasted enough breath talking about Corey Feldman his campaigns and his trolls so I will say this to you anyone watching if you've donated, I hope this gets made. I hope this film gets made. Because if you've donated, and Corey says even if you donate a dollar, it's okay. I hope this gets made. Because you know what? You do not get your money back. So I hope for your sake you donated. And you know what? If I'm wrong, and Corey donates, and he makes it public, and this rape foundation publicly says, thank you, Corey Feldman, for your donations. If this film gets made and gets, you know, a theatrical release, good for him. You could, you know, probably make a documentary, and for cheaper, because, you know, you wanted $10 million, and now you've cut it down to $1 million. You can easily get the word out, man. So, I've talked enough about you. I've talked way too long. I will not be making another Corey Feldman video. I will just only talk about you on Twitter. So in this, I will say, anyone watching, like and subscribe, or don't. I don't care. Cheers. And hopefully, it's all money well spent.